These are the best and worst legends in Apex Season 20. Now, quick context, nearly every legend is much improved this season due to the perk system upgrades. So when I ranked these legends, I obviously factored in their perks and how they stack up against one another, but ultimately core abilities are what's still most important. Now this ranking is for pubs and for ranked. And as always, this is just my opinion. So when I don't put your main in S tier, don't get too pressed. Starting off D tier, and I know a lot of people aren't gonna like this, but the truth is I have Ballistic in here. And Ballistic has some of the worst upgrades this season. Season. While I think he can be a fun legend to play, and sure, you definitely can find some success with him, it's hard to make a case that his abilities are just so much better than basically any of the other legends right now. His buffs this season are that his sling weapon now has all white attachments, and his ultimate range is now 90 meters, which basically means if your teammates are far away, it can still benefit them. His previous range was 13 meters on this ultimate, so it's definitely a huge upgrade. I'm just not sure how impactful it is. Now, the sling buff is cool, but once again, most players aren't going to utilize their sling unless they're using his ultimate or something has gone seriously wrong with their first two weapons. And keep in mind, now that digital threats no longer can go on SMGs, this is a slight nerf to Ballistic's ultimate because he won't get that fully kitted alternator with a digital threat. I do hope to see some upgrades to his perks because I think there's a lot of room to be really creative here in the future. And yes, I know his smart bullet upgrades can be much better you can either have two of them or you can triple the duration for one of them and yeah if you get hit by that it's going to be tough to combat it but for the most part he's just not that strong and just to be clear, because Blistic is going to be the only legend I have in D tier, this doesn't mean he's absolutely trash. Because of these legend upgrades, I think like every legend can find some viability this season. It's just in terms of ranking, I got to have him in the bottom tier for now. Starting off in C tier, I've got Fuse. Now, Fuse's upgrades are also sort of underwhelming, and I can understand why. Just hear me out for one second. Apex didn't want to buff Fuse to the point where any of his abilities did more damage to enemies. Basically, they wanted to remove some damage that Fuse could take himself. Now, I understand that because Fuse is the only legend that has abilities that center around dealing damage, but I do think there are a couple things they could have adjusted. Instead of having Fuse's first upgrade be Big Bang or Scar Tissue, I think it would have been cooler if Fuse could take less damage from his Knuckle Cluster or decide if he wants to take less damage from his Mother Load. Something like that would have brought these perks up just a little bit because ultimately, if I'm playing Fuse and I've talked to a couple other Fuse mains, they are always going to go with Scar Tissue and then they're always going to go with Knuckle Hustler. Now, Knuckle Hustler is cool because you get that speed boost if your Knuckle Cluster connects. So he's definitely better than last season, but but he's not a meta pick in my eyes. Next in C tier is Vantage, and ultimately I think we've got the weakest recon legend here in Vantage. Her upgrades are mediocre, you know, you've got gaining access to ring consoles, which I don't think is that viable, or the ultimate reload where she can get two extra bullets from an ultimate accelerant, which yes, gives her more ammunition in her sniper, but I kind of wish it just gave her two extra bullets. Would that be too OP? I don't know. Her second upgrade is improving the tactical's double jump, which I have noticed, you know, you can go further on this for sure. I have not tried the sharpshooter where you can refresh the tactical on hits with the ultimate, but Vantage is just this odd legend in my opinion. Like her abilities are decent, don't get me wrong, and she's fun to play at times but i think all of the other recon legends are just better right now and i'm going to get into why later but i've got her in c tier for now however i just have to add if you are going to play vantage there is no doubt that her sniper is really strong right a couple hits you're probably getting a knock three hits you're definitely getting a knock and so it can be a very impactful thing on a fight but there's definitely a lot of outplay that players can utilize to combat her ultimate. And so when you take that into consideration, it feels like the moments where she is strong are very limited. All right, moving down the list in C tier, next I have Crypto. While I think Crypto is the second weakest recon legend, his upgrades are okay. His first upgrades, I'm not a huge fan of. Like I think reducing the tactical cooldown by 10 seconds should have already been a slight buff to him. Now, real quick, Crypto did receive two small buffs this season, okay? You can go into the drone quicker and you can exit it quicker. They didn't release the time difference on this, but to me, it felt like maybe half a second. Nothing crazy. His second upgrade is pretty good, right? You can increase the EMP range by a quarter percent, or it, when you throw out the drone, Crypto will call out the squads in the area. This is helpful so Crypto doesn't have to go into the drone and ping the banner. You know, if you're not on voice comms, your teammates will have to have heard Crypto say that. So there's no doubt in my mind Crypto is better, but I think there's room for his perks to go up a little bit when you compare him to the other recon legends. All right, wrapping up C tier, I have Newcastle. And I know a lot of people aren't gonna agree with this because Newcastle can be really strong and there are some players who swear by him. 
But when I tried him out, I was a little underwhelmed. Upon reading his perks, I thought he was going to be much better than what he is. Increasing the mobile shield to the weapon's sprint speed can be helpful, but often it felt like just a little too much was going on. If you overshoot that ping with his shield, it's going way too far past you. And depending on how you're moving with the shield and its utility, it can wind up kind of backfiring. Now you can also choose to have the shield be stronger by an extra 250 health points, which could go a long way, but there are certainly other support legends that are just better now. When you look at his second upgrades, reviving your allies with up to 75 HP, which will slowly tick up over time, is valid. You know, you stack that with the gold knockdown, that can definitely be helpful. I think I would typically take that over his stronghold perk, where his castle wall gets 250 extra HP and the barriers energized for up to two minutes. It would certainly depend on what type of match you're in and your role as Newcastle. Are you solo queuing? You playing with your buddies? And despite his lower ranking, Newcastle will certainly still find niche pockets of the game where you're like, damn, they definitely just won that fight because they have a Newcastle. And that's always been the case. It's just going to be even bigger now. But I think a better perk for him would have been to increase the revive speed. We saw how popular Newcastle was in three strikes. The huge reason was just for how quick he could res. Now you don't want it that fast because that's broken in normal game modes. But if they could have done something like they did to lifelines, I think Newcastle would have been a little bit better. Moving on to B tier. First up is Ash. Yeah, you heard that right. I know Ash's tactical got silently nerfed with the cooldown being 24 seconds, but I think with her upgrade, she became much more viable. I actually don't think the silent nerf was on accident. I think it was on purpose because of one of her second upgrades. But certainly some of you could make a case that B tier is far too generous for Ash. But what I found when playing as Ash is that having two snares was pretty good. 20 damage each time and they're pretty easy to connect on. They can be incredibly useful mid fight. Her first upgrades are decent. I'm not confident on which one I think is totally better than the other, but they can come in handy for being aware of third parties or just nearby enemies. Combine all that with her portal and you've got a legend right in the middle of the bunch in my eyes. Second in B tier is Valkyrie. Now I saw a good amount of people saying Valkyrie would return into the meta, and while I'm certainly not that bullish on her at the moment, there's no doubt a few of her upgrades are severe improvements from where she's been at. Her first two upgrades are great. Usually I've been going with the Aerial Expert one, but if I was playing ranked and using Valk for more of the macro rotations, I would probably go with the Afterburners perk. Her second upgrade is really all about the full tank for me, where she increases her fuel by 25%. I don't really find the widening of her missile swarm that good, nor worth it when comparing it to the fuel tank increase. Plus, if you coupled Aerial Expert with full tank, you're almost back to how Valk was on release, where her jetpack was insanely strong. I think you're definitely going to see Valk's pick rate go up this season, I'm just not sure how high it will actually go. Third in B tier is Catalyst, and I'm kind of out on Catalyst. Like if I had any stock, I would have sold it last season. Her upgrades are mid because they really just slightly improve her to where she was at in the past. But this season, they nerfed her wall in length and how long it lasts. And if you miss the exact numbers, her wall lasts only for 15 seconds, down from 25. And it's now only 40 meters long as opposed to 55. Now this is without any upgrades, of course, but yeah, I don't know. I played her and I couldn't help but feel like I'd rather be on any of the other controller legends. Now the case for Catalyst is that her abilities are still strong and while they may not be what they once were, she's still a hybrid legend because she can hold down buildings well and use her wall for many different kinds of scenarios. And to be frank, I think the reason that they nerfed her wall is solely because of how popular she is in competitive Apex. I don't think in the average lobby her wall was problematic. And that could maybe be said about some of her other abilities, but I do know for a fact that her tactical was definitely way more overpowered in the past when compared to any of the other controller legends. And so with that said, I'm kind of leaning more and more every season into the I kind of wish ALGS had its own tweaks away from the main game, but Apex has said that they don't want to do that. So this is what it is for now. All right, moving down B tier, next I have Bloodhound. Bloodhound received a small but meaningful change when they made it so that the White Ravens that you could previously interact with to not only get info on squads that are near you, but also to reduce your ultimate cooldown is now locked behind one of their legend upgrades. To be clear, you can still interact with the white ravens and they'll fly to the nearest squad even if you didn't pick the raving's blessing perk but it won't decrease the ultimate cooldown without that perk equipped some people were upset by this and i can definitely see why their perks are pretty good and with bangalore still being so popular i just think that bloodhound will be played a lot this season a lot of people thought that the second perk upgrade where bloodhound would be able to get 25 extra hp every time they got a knock in the beast of the hunt 
but I haven't found that to be true. I usually just go with the double duration of the scan. And I think that when you couple this with the first perk, Bloodhound is a great pick for ranked and for pubs this season, no doubt. Also in B tier, I have Rampart, and Rampart actually has some good perks, and that's a huge reason why I'm putting her here in B tier. Trying her out, I actually had a lot of fun, and I think it just amplifies a lot of her strong suits. Reducing the ultimate cooldown by 30 seconds is great, especially early game. Like if you get a squad wipe, level up your armor, and then you know another team is near, but maybe you're low on ammo, knowing Sheila is on the way much quicker is very strong. And this perk should then apply throughout the whole game. Now, sometimes perks can only work only one time per match. It's definitely contingent on which perk and which legend, but I would say most of the perks are reoccurring throughout the match, and this is one of them. The second upgrade is also very viable because you can either get a faster Sheila reload or faster reloads to any weapon when behind her amped cover, or you can decide if you want to improve the handling and speed up time of Sheila by 20%, which can go a long way, and obviously both of these stack well with the first upgrade. Great. So I'm a fan of Rampart this season for sure. The last legend I have in B tier is Gibraltar, and I kind of struggled with putting Gibby in B tier. I thought about C tier, but I couldn't do it because the truth is, he's just much better than what he was last season. If you're recently returning to Apex, well, they have been slightly buffing Gibby over the course of the last year, and now his perks just add some icing on the cake. Are they the best perks? No, not really, but they're decent and they improve him significantly. The two perks I go with are Fresh Start and Baby Bubble, which that smaller bubble is hardly noticeable. You can still have your whole team in that bubble, so for me, it makes the most sense because it also is going to decrease the cooldown as well. So you get a smaller one, but more often. Now, Gibby to me isn't a super fun fragging legend to play, like if you're solo queuing pubs, but if you're looking to fulfill that support role in ranked, or I guess in pubs, you really can't go wrong with picking him because he's still really strong and has a high 1v1 potential. Okay, now we're moving into A tier. These are some of the best legends to use in season 20. Now, first I have Mad Maggie, and I'm sure by now you've seen a lot of the hype surrounding Mad Maggie, and it's real. She has some of the best upgrades in the game for sure. Her first two upgrades are she can choose between a wrecking ball that catches fire and explodes in thermites, or she can decide if she wants the auto reload shotguns on a knock. Now, I think most people are going to go with the fireball upgrade because it is a bit chaotic and they have adjusted her wrecking ball this season so that it's a bit more consistent. Although I do have to say I was initially a little disappointed with how it actually played out in game. Yeah, it can hit two people now without blowing up, but there are some times where it's still very unpredictable. It's definitely improved though. And on our next two upgrades, I think it's really up to you in deciding which one you find more valuable. You can choose if you want an extra riot drill charge, but reduce the active duration by 25%, or you can decide if you want the big drill, which will increase the depth and width of her tactical by 50%. I think Maggie with the shotguns being strong is a very viable pick in season 20. They've updated her Wrecking Ball, you've got a better Riot Drill now, and with Shotguns being in the meta, all of this is just a no-brainer. So she's definitely an excellent legend for pubs or for ranked, especially if you want to frag out with her. Second in A tier is Pathfinder. Now, Pathfinder doesn't have the best upgrades. I think what most people are excited about are his second upgrades, particularly one of them. But ultimately, we have to talk about how Pathfinder got nerfed slightly this season. So no longer can you just scan one care package and get your ultimate right back. Now you're gonna have to scan two of them because it's a 50% ult charge when you scan one of them. But in exchange, it will decrease his next ultimate on the cooldown by 15 seconds. You can also scan ring consoles or survey beacons with one of his first upgrades and this will enhance the cooldown on his zipline as well so it's a slight nerf but with the perk it kind of levels out now what most people are excited about are his second perk where he can reset the grapple on nox and this is definitely his best perk for sure because his other perk is taking 25 percent less damage while riding energized zip lines and this is really just his zip line it's not zip lines in the game like in fragment or whatever i don't really see that much value in the zip line zen perk because back when they buffed pathfinder about a year ago his travel speed on zip lines is already very fast so most people aren't going to take a ton of damage while riding his zip lines I think the grapple cooldown resetting on a knock is much more OP. And the only reason why I can't put Pathfinder in S tier is the same reason as always, his hitbox is just far too big. If that was adjusted, he would definitely be one of the best legends in the game. But he's still a very strong pick, so he's going in A tier for now. All right, moving down the list, I have Caustic in A tier. And I put Caustic in A tier because anytime his gas becomes more impactful, it's really hard to ignore him in the legend meta. I really like Caustic's upgrades, particularly his first ones. 
Now, he can choose between having a tactical throw range increase by 75%, which is huge. You are able to huck these traps now. Or he can increase his ultimate area effect by 50%. This is also viable. His second upgrades aren't as good, but they're still viable. You can regenerate your health while in the Nox gas, or you can decide if you want the Nox vision to persist for longer. I think this one, you can decide which one you find more valuable. For me, I typically went for the regeneration of HP, but this only works, obviously, if you're in the gas, you've taken shield damage, and you're taking health damage. And it's a slow tick up of health, so you may find the Nox vision more valuable. It's nice to see some positive changes for Caustic because I feel like he's been left in the dust the past year or so. And now that Catalyst is nerfed, I think that him and one other controller legend are much more viable this season, especially if you're looking to pick a controller legend in ranked. Next, I have Octane, and some of you may think Octane is B tier because of his upgrades, and while I could certainly understand that point, for pubs, he's just a lot better than he's ever been, and for controller players who want to have access to tab strafing, well, this is a significant upgrade. Now, on his first perk, I think taking 25% less stim is more worthwhile than his other upgrade, because that means you'll now only take 15 HP every time you stim, and on his second perk, I think there's value for both of them. You could choose to have two jump pads or have the tap strafing ability. If you play mouse and keyboard, you're probably going with the two pads upgrade, but for controller players, you'll have some optionality. A tier might be too high for Octane because I don't necessarily think of him as a meta pick for ranked, but he could be in the right hands, I suppose. I definitely put him this high because of his potential in pubs. The perks also take away from some of the stupidity that can come from playing Octane, like stimming too much and losing too much health, or predictably padding into a team and not having too much outplay at your disposal. Now he can combat both of those things somewhat with his perks. Next is Watson, and Watson does see a significant upgrade this season with her perks and the nerfs to Catalyst. One of my main issues with Watson in the past has been how weak her gen can be, and I know the Watson mains have defended it till the end, but now that her perks just enhance her ultimate that much more, well, it's hard to argue that she isn't going to be very strong this season. Her first upgrade is a hybrid option of having her gen spawn arc stars when it intercepts an ordinance, and quickly, this only works for enemy attacks, has a 1.5 second cooldown between spawns, and the arc stars must be picked up before more than five can be spawned. Now, if you don't want to choose that and you want to revive allies with 50 HP, this could be a nice addition seeing how Watson has a unique revive animation. I think the arc star spawn can be valuable towards late game due to how much less space there is and how that always makes throwables more impactful, but you'll have to decide for yourself. On her second upgrade, she can choose two different ways to buff her ultimate. You can have the option to have two gens out at the same time with a slower shield regen capacity and also ultimate accelerants can be used twice as fast, or you can choose to double the gen's HP and shield healing capacity. I think I like the second perk more, but it will definitely depend on the situation I'm in. Overall, solid upgrades for Watson this season. Next in A tier is Seer, and some people are just not going to agree with this, but man, all of these Seers running around at the beginning of the season to complete these challenges for the Flatline skin have just brought me right back to seeing how OP Seer actually is. I'd even argue his abilities don't belong in the game, but the constant wall hacks and info derived from all of his abilities are just ridiculous. Most of his upgrades bring him back to what he used to be like a season or two ago, and on top of all of that, there is now a setting in game where you can increase his ADS speed with his hands, and I found that to be very useful. If you play on a lowish sense or you're on controller, you may want to adjust this season if you're going to play Seer, but I think he's one of the top recon legends and definitely viable for pubs and ranked. All right, second to last in A tier is Lifeline. Now, a lot has changed to Lifeline this season. First, Support Bins got an overall buff, which obviously affects more than just Lifeline, but I thought it was important to know. Second, since Armor doesn't spawn on the ground anymore, her care package has changed so that now it will spawn more healing items and smart loot, things like weapon attachments for her and her squad mates. Now, I actually think Lifeline's upgrades are awesome. You can choose to have a faster revive speed by 20%, or you can reduce her tactical cooldown by 10 seconds. Both, I think, are meaningful, but I think the rapid response is better. And on her next upgrade, you can decide if you want to self-revive, or her next Lifeline care package is a supply drop, meaning you definitely will get a care package weapon. Keep in mind that both of these second perks are a one-time deal per match, so you only get one self-revive, and you only get one Lifeline package that will be a supply drop. You obviously still get other lifeline packages if you progress through the match, but it will not be a supply drop. Needless to say, all of these perks make her more viable, particularly if you're able to speed up that revive and then just provide more loot or optionality for your team as this support legend. These perks make a lot of sense for lifeline, and I'm honestly really interested to see if they go forward with this rumored rework now that perks are in the game and lifeline can be a bit more dynamic. 
Okay, wrapping up A tier is Mirage, and some of y'all just aren't gonna get this, but with the changes they made last season to his decoys, and now the addition of his perks, Mirage can really be a chaotic legend in season 20. You basically will always have decoys at your disposal now if you want to, and that is enough to confuse a lot of players, especially with how audio in Apex works. His first upgrades are very good. You can either gain an extra ultimate decoy and reduce the cooldown by 30 seconds, or you can revive allies with up to a 75 HP regen. Now, for me personally, I like going with the extra ultimate decoy and reducing the cooldown, because that means that for the rest of the match, his ultimate will be on a 30 second cooldown. And on his second upgrade, you can either have a refresh tactical on successful bamboozle, or you can gain an extra decoy charge and you can have both active at once. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that you cannot control both of them, but you actually can. It's just a little bit weird. You have to send them both out pretty quickly and then hit the control button. If you do one at a time or if you mess up the timing just slightly, you'll only be able to control one of them. But however, it is possible to control both. All of this makes Mirage very viable, especially when you factor in his special revive animation. And going forward, I think you'll see more of him. And if you don't, well, then people are just sleeping on him, frankly. Now we're getting into S tier, the best of the best this season. And first up is Revenant. Revenant is the cheesiest legend, but it's hard to argue against how strong he is. His ultimate is just frankly ridiculous. It's like a free 1v1 tool. And his upgrades are honestly pretty good. His first one, Murder Machine, is the same as Ashes, so it'll call out a number of squad within 150 meter range after you kill a full squad. Just remember that this is a vocal warning and nothing will be visually indicated. If you don't like that though, you can reduce his tactical cooldown by five seconds. And then on his second upgrades, you have a pretty tough decision to make here. Do you want the Shadow Pounce charge time reduced by 20%, meaning you'll get a quicker tactical, or do you want the Shadow Pounce to reset on a knock, which I believe this already applies when Revenant is in his ultimate. I think you can't go wrong here with either one. It's just going to depend on how you like to play and which one you value most. I was honestly really surprised we didn't see any nerfs to Revenant, but I guess Apex wants him to be up in the top given how long he was down in the bottom. All right, next in S tier is Bangalore. And despite all of the recent nerfs to her, she's still a really strong legend. Keep in mind, digital threats no longer go on SMGs. And as of last night, they actually removed digital threats from the Wingman care package. Now, when you get the Wingman, it'll only have a 1X sight on it and you're not able to take it off. Digital threats will still be able to go on other pistols and shotguns. So that is still a factor when it comes to fighting in Bangalore smoke. And her perks are honestly pretty decent. They're not amazing, but she doesn't need amazing perks because she's already a pretty strong legend. On her first upgrade, I can't see a reason why you wouldn't want to reduce the ultimate cooldown by 60 seconds. This will significantly help throughout the match. And then on her second upgrade, you can decide if you want auto pinging on enemies who trigger her double time, or she can passively regenerate her health while inside her smoke. This is pretty slow and may come in handy, but for me personally, I think the auto pinging is better. Regardless, Bangalore will still be in the meta this season, and I don't see her pick rate faltering at all. So S tier for now. Third in S tier is Horizon. Horizon did receive one small nerf this season, bringing her cooldown timer up to 25 seconds, which previously was 20 seconds. But one of her upgrades is just reverting this nerf altogether, or you can choose to reduce her ultimate cooldown by 30 seconds, which is another previous form of how her ultimate used to be. Now, I know some people were disappointed by her upgrades, and look, I get it. Her first two upgrades are flat out useless. But at the same time, this legend has been dominating the meta for a while. And any perks that would have enhanced her too much would have just made her that much more popular and been a regression from all of the nerfs Apex has done to her over the past few years. The reason I still have her this high up is because floating in that lift is still overpowered. Strafing, healing, having her whole team take height, I could go on. And her smooth passive complements her kit well. People like how she moves, and I get it. Next is Wraith, and Wraith just got better all around this season. Season, so it's hard to argue that she won't be one of the better legends in my opinion. Is S tier too generous? Perhaps, but her perks allow for a faster use of her Q, more info from where she's being aimed at from, and shorter cooldowns on her abilities. I think when you take into account how they've been slightly buffing her over the past year, she's honestly a really dynamic strong legend in today's game. You can use her for team play, or solo queuing, ranked, or pubs, and I value that a lot, so I have her in S tier for now. All right, second to last in S tier is Loba, and Loba's another great example of just getting better all around, and I believe she was already a really strong legend. Her tactical got super buffed from her legend upgrades. I mean, look how far and high you can now throw this thing. Now, you can choose to enhance the ultimate if you want it, although I'm nearly always gonna go with the buffs to her tactical, but that's just my preference. And if you've been playing Apex for a while, then you'll be relieved, because finally, we have some significant upgrades upgrades to her tactical that we've all been asking for, and I'm loving that. It's also worth mentioning with the change to craft,
crafting, her ability to quickly get banners for free is even more valuable on Loba this season. I think we'll continue to see Loba picked a ton, particularly in ranked. All right, last in S tier is Conduit, and Conduit did receive a ton of nerfs this season, but they aren't too big of a deal in my opinion because she already released so strong. What they did was they increased her tactical cooldown to 26 seconds, it previously was 21. The temporary shield regeneration rate has decreased to 15 HP per second, it previously was 20. And the temporary shield generation time was increased to nine seconds, which was previously eight. They also adjusted her energy barricade, they made it not last as long, and they decreased some of the HP in it. Now these things definitely take her down a little bit, but when you look at her upgrades and you factor in that she is such a unique support legend that can actively help throughout so many fights, it's hard to argue that she isn't an S tier pick. On her first upgrade, I'm always gonna go with the Radiant Transfer, increase my tactical range by 10 meters. And then on the second upgrade, I'm probably gonna go with the Split Charge so that I can have another tactical charge, but half the shield regeneration. Having two of them is very handy. You can hit both your teammates up or you can just use two within a fight. And this also plays off of healing Conduit herself too. She's just a really dynamic legend and I still think her ult's strong. So she's S tier for now. Be sure to click the link down below if you want to enhance your cybersecurity. It helps out my channel a ton. And while you're waiting for my weapon tier list, why don't you check out this video next? Thanks so much for watching. Peace.